we are going to start at Anfield. And there's so much to say about this, this game tonight. I want to start with Liverpool. They were majestic, brilliant, dynamic, scary, intimidating. And it's another game they have won. The attack looks potent. The defence, the midfield, cool, calm and collected for large parts of this game, barring one player, and we'll delve into that in a few moments. This Liverpool team is the real deal. This Liverpool team is slowly becoming, or maybe you could say quickly becoming, the favourites to win the Premier League, to send Jurgen Klopp out on an absolute high. And to do this with some of these games Trent has been missing, he's slowly returning. To do this with Endo being away, who's a really important part to their, of their team for the five or six weeks prior to the Asian Cup. And with no Mohamed Salah, a lot of Liverpool's rivals chatted pure, unadulterated BS. Pure, unadulterated BS. Oh, when Mo Salah leaves, who's going to step up? They are going to drop off. And I don't believe Klopp and his teams, I don't believe this Liverpool side is built that way. That is not the cough, cloth of which they are cut from. And as a Man United fan, this is infuriating me. As a Man United fan, this is frustrating me no end, watching Liverpool be this goddamn good again. Darwin Nunes today breaking the record for the post being hit the most amount of times in a game. You could argue he should have scored his penalty, but how unlucky was that man today? Aside from that, an absolute demon on the football pitch, causing problems every single minute of the game. I thought McAllister in the middle was an absolute powerhouse today. The money they spent on him, I mean, it was already a snip. It looks even cheaper now with these performances that he is putting in. It really is. Star of the show, Connor Bradley. Two assists, by the way. A goal tonight as well. And what a finish it was from that young man. They don't really need uh, uh, a replacement for uh, Trent because he's still so young. But an understudy has been needed for a long time. And I think they've got an absolute gem, a star, an absolute... An absolute... It pains me to say this. Another Liverpool legend in the making in that young man. He's got a lot of hard work ahead of him. He's got a lot of a lot of barriers to push through. But what an absolute tip-top player he is indeed. Then I also want to shout out Soberslide tonight as well. Great start to his Premier League career. Went off the boil a little bit, but I know his goal, I'm not going to say his goal papered over cracks. I thought a, a, a really solid display from him today as well. Curtis Jones, been saying it for weeks now. He has become a proper Liverpool player in recent weeks. And although he wasn't on the score sheet, it was a really good performance from him. But overall, the way this Liverpool team plays together, the way this Liverpool team performs, it's dangerous. It's scary. It's intimidating. And the word I would use to describe them is utterly, or it's two words really, is utterly relentless. They have to be taken seriously. Just one defeat this season, and that came in a very controversial way. I believe they're a few wins away, and maybe it comes this weekend at Arsenal. One more win. Maybe if they extend their lead over Man City by a little bit more, with everything going on with, with, with Jurgen Klopp's leaving, I think they could become the favourites for this Premier League title. And I say that because tonight was an acid test. How would the players the fans and everybody else react to the Klopp news in a big Premier League game against one of their Premier League nemesis in Chelsea? Would that pressure become too much? Would the pressure engulf these players? Would it suffocate them? Would that cauldron of noise in some regards turn on this Liverpool team? There was those theories. But in, pra in, in actuality, nothing of the sort. The atmosphere was spellbinding. The atmosphere stunned Chelsea Football Club. The power of the cop, the power of Anfield was on display. And I think this Liverpool team is going to go up a level now that this news is public. They are playing for the badge. They're playing for the fans. But there's something personal in it now for these players. They want to give the greatest goodbye ever to Jurgen Klopp by not just winning one trophy, but maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. What a team they are. What a performance from them tonight. And in some regards, 
Four goals was somewhat flattering. 27 shots to four in this game. 12 were on target. Four hit the post. That's how close they were to this being a sort of Manchester United style drumming in this game. Absolutely tip top quality performance from Liverpool. Now, there was controversy in the game and we and we can't ignore that. Now, my belief, and I'll say this from the outset, is Liverpool would have won this game irrespective. I believe they would have won the game. But what I can't do is sit here and lie. Goals change games. There was two hugely controversial decisions in this football match that no matter what Chelsea, no matter how angry Chelsea fans are about their performance, these shouldn't be ignored. The first was very early in the game. Van Dijk pulling on the shirt or holding the shirt of Gallagher, also stepping across him, making knee contact. So his knee made contact with his leg and it tripped him up. Most Liverpool fans I've spoken to have said it could have been soft, but they think it was a penalty. This was checked by VAR and not given. No on-field review. And I think Chelsea fans could feel very, very, very hard done by with this decision. And just as Christopher Nkunku made it 3-1, and Chelsea were in a little bit of a purple patch in the game. There was another incident where Van Dijk again, this time kicked through the back of Nkunku. Now, for me, there was just as much contact or as much force in both of these circumstances as the penalty that Liverpool were rightfully given earlier on in the game during the foul on Jota. I am frustrated that these were not given because VAR is meant to be here to ensure the correct decisions are there. And in my humble view, if that was Silva or Dasasi or Badia Shield on a Liverpool player today, I think they're given. So as much as I think Liverpool deserve this win, as much as I think Liverpool would have gone on to win this game, irrespective of those two penalties and goals, we can't ignore them. I've said it all year, I'm on a crusade to call out these terrible decisions. And I've defended Liverpool on multiple occasions when they have been robbed of decisions in game. And for me today, Chelsea were robbed of two clear-cut stonewall penalties. Now, I still think Liverpool would have gone on to win, but there is an argument, and it's a, and it's, and it's a valid one, that goals change games. If they get that penalty in the, earlier on in the game, when Kunku scores, it could be 3-2. Even if without that first penalty, if they're given that one at the end there against Van Dijk with 15 minutes left plus injury time, suddenly it's 3-2. The dynamic of the game changes. And I think Chelsea fans should look at their team's performance tonight. They should look at the awful midfield partnership of Caicedo and Enzo tonight. They should criticize the lack of creativity, the inability to hold on to the ball. All of that can be discussed. But I don't think football fans should ignore these clear awful decisions from the on-field referee and VAR. Football fans have got to stand together to push back against this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand by Chelsea on these decisions in the same way as I stood by Liverpool when they were robbed against Manchester City. Sorry, when they were um, robbed against Tottenham earlier on this season. There's also another game recently where, where they, had a, they didn't get a penalty against Arsenal when there was a handball and they didn't get it. I stood by Liverpool in those circumstances as well. So I'm as fair as a day is long, and I'm unbiased in this. And I, I think they were absolutely horrendous decisions. And Chelsea certainly were robbed of opportunities to get back into this game. And I think their fans should feel aggrieved at them and should criticize those elements, as well as, as well as calling out Poch, calling out these players for what was an absolutely pitiful display at Anfield tonight. An absolutely pitiful display. And they are really lucky in some respects that they didn't concede five, six, seven, eight goals. Petrovic in goal made some good saves. Darwin, you know, not finishing his dinner as an example, because this could have gone from embarrassing to absolutely mortifying had there been a little bit more accuracy tonight from Liverpool. But I do think there were two stonewall penalties that should have been given. But I do want to gauge your opinion. I do want to know what you think. I want to know what you feel. There'll be some Liverpool fans that will say, we've had our bad decisions. It swings and roundabouts. There will be others that say we got very lucky with those tonight, but we move. Chelsea fans, I want to get your views. I want to get your opinions in the comments section below as well. Do us a big, big favor, though, please, and smash the like button. Please make sure you are subscribing to the Football Terrace as well, and you've turned the bell notification button on. A uh, comment here says, uh, soft penalties, but penalties nevertheless. Uh, 
listen, I still think they're penalties for me personally, but there we go. There's going to 